Hey folks, David Glenn here from the North Carolina Sports Network. Join us at the first ever North Carolina Sports Network Bacon and Baseball event presented by the North Carolina Pork Council. The event is set for Friday night, May 3rd at UNCW's Brooks Field as the Seahawks open a huge Coastal Athletic Association series against in-state rival and fellow CAA contender, Campbell. Get your tickets now for this huge Three game Friday, Saturday, Sunday, CAA baseball series between UNCW Seahawks and the Campbell Fighting Camels. We get it started on Friday night, so come out and meet me, David Glenn, and the rest of our North Carolina Sports Network crew, where we will be talking baseball and taping content with fans before and during the Camels Seahawks game. We will have lots of giveaways for fans, including bacon and baseball t shirts and stickers while they last. We'll also be providing some great North Carolina pork sandwiches, courtesy of the North Carolina Pork Council and our friends at Jimmy's Wrightsville Beach in conjunction with UNCW Athletics. It's the first ever North Carolina Sports Network bacon and baseball event presented by the North Carolina Pork Council and the three game CAA baseball series between the UNCW Seahawks and the Campbell Fighting Camels. For ticket information, go to uncwsports.com slash buy tickets. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the David Glenn Show, now seen and heard exclusively here on the North Carolina Sports Network. Please find more of our audio, video, and articles at our website, ncsportsnetwork.com. Our special guest today, Bethany Bradshaw, is one of the most prolific sports authors in the history of the great state of North Carolina. She started her professional career as a newspaper sports reporter, covering mostly the National Football League and college basketball. And she has been an author, ghostwriter, and freelance journalist since 1997. In the last 15 years, she has published 15 books, either as a solo author or as a collaborator. You can learn more about those various offerings, including books on the Dixie Classic Basketball Tournament, legendary ECU baseball coach Keith LeClaire, the ACC basketball legend Bones McKinney, the Super Bowl, yes, that Super Bowl, and also the Big Rock Fishing Tournament here in North Carolina, among many other topics Her personal website is BethanyBradshire.com. Bethany has been based for many years in Greenville, North Carolina, and that also serves as the setting for her new book on the East Carolina University baseball program and its prominent, unique place in the awesome college sports culture that we have here across North Carolina. The book is entitled, Never Take This For Granted, Around the Diamond with College Baseball's Most Devoted Fan Base. You can actually pre-order this book right now by visiting the website ecubaseballbook.com with the official release of the book set for April 19th. Again, the website ecubaseballbook.com. The book's timing seems like a great fit, in part because as we speak, the East Carolina Pirates are ranked in the national top 10 alongside a whole bunch of teams from the Atlantic Coast Conference and the Southeastern Conference. In fact, the ACC and the SEC right now make up 12 of the top 14 teams in the nation as we speak. The only other two teams that high in those national rankings are top 10 Oregon State and, yes, top 10 ECU. Now we bring her onto the program, and we really welcome her back to the program. She's a longtime friend. Bethany Bradshaw, welcome back to The David Glenn Show. How are you? I'm doing great, Dave. Thank you for having me on this nice Monday. It's great to have you. So let's start with the big picture. What makes ECU's baseball environment, if not the very best in all of college baseball, certainly one of the best, as I've experienced and as you have had Uh, almost literally right there in your backyard for many years now. Uh, Literally is true. Yes, it is just the passion of the fans. Um, You know, college baseball does not take a backseat here in the city to anything else. They love their football. 
the basketball, you know, it would be nice if, if that tradition could get going as well, but it's, it has taken a backseat, I would say, over the years I've lived here. But baseball is every bit as prominent in terms of in the hearts of the fans and the attention and the time they give and the amount of how, how much they care about the results on the field and the postseason results as well. So I just have never seen anything like it in terms of fans that are out there game in, game out, not just, you know, when there's a reason to go because they're hosting a regional or something like that. They are there in every way for this team. And, and you know, as I got to explore in the book, just some really unique relationships between the players and the community and, and that the really run both ways. Well, I know you've interviewed approximately four dozen or so people for this book, and it gives you a, a unique perspective. You get to go around a lot of different corners. Mm -hmm. Do you have a theory to whatever degree you explored it or not, just in what ways the ECU Pirate Baseball fan base impacts the reality that I just described, where they're up there fairly frequently, including right now, with much larger schools with more resources uh, and sometimes better facilities. And yet there's ECU in the national top 10 right now. Can you connect the dots between the baseball culture in your book and being a top 10 program? Certainly when it comes to recruiting, I mean, if you're a high school baseball player, as I know you were back in the day, and you're visiting some programs and you go to a place with, you know, even just a regular conference weekend that, that doesn't have a whole lot riding on it, you're going to have 4,000 fans out there, you know, screaming a purple gold cheer, fully engaged in the game. And, you know, most college baseball programs, maybe that kind of interest is going to get peaked if they make a super regional or certainly the College World Series. But throughout the season, you're going to mostly see family of players, a few random fans here and there. So I know for a fact that I've talked to recruits who that was the thing that brought them in not any anything else. And the stadium is quite nice and, and is a wonderful environment to play in. How would you describe the jungle to <laughs> someone who has never been to ECU's Clark LeClaire Stadium, which of course is where the Pirates play baseball? I'll start with this. My sister, my older sister, who is a huge baseball fan, lives in South Texas. She said to me the other day, I just want to come watch baseball in the jungle. And she's never been here. She's been here, but not to the jungle. <laughs> she's coming for the Rice Series. Um, May 17 through 19, we got her plane tickets. We're all set. It is an outfield environment where people are dialed in. It, but I'll say this, I, I have season jungle tickets and I love the community. A lot of my friends are out there every game and kids are running back and forth and kids are throwing a football or throwing a baseball or whatever they're doing. Their parents know they're safe. Everybody is keeping an eye out for them. You know, it's kind of the town square out here, I'd say. And I just love the environment. I mean, people I know who have seats in the stands say, why do you want to watch from out there in the outfield? And I, I can't explain it. I know my view isn't as good as my friend, you know, with a seat right on the third baseline, right above the dugout. And I go over there and visit. And I think, yeah, I can see things better, but I'd rather be out there. Um, there's a cannon out there. There are guys with megaphones handing them over the wall. They have a series of standard cheers for whatever situation you can think of. And also doing a lot of heckling of the left fielder in particular, but they're ECU students heckling the right fielder. And sometimes, and some of it's heckling and some of it's really good natured getting to know them and, and making friends with them. So it's just, it's amazing. It's so much fun. If you love baseball, you have to love being out there. I think. Bethany Bradshaw is joining us. Her new book is called Never Take This for Granted, Around the Diamond with College Baseball's Most Devoted Fan Base. If I were pitching in front of thousands of people, that would have been one of the biggest crowds of my entire life. And I do remember both good-natured crowds and heckling crowds. One of the coolest parts of your book is that there are, there are, we would all predict that ECU players love the jungle and love the culture that Bethany has described in, our, in her book. It would not be as easy to predict that some opposing players have gone out of their way before leaving Greenville to essentially introduce themselves to a chunk of pirate nation. What, what did you find in that part of your book? Because that's a fun wrinkle. It is a fun wrinkle. And what you get on you know several different times a season, the left field fans, what I call the megaphone crew, they put together a care package. And at the end of the weekend, they give it to the opposing left fielder because they've become buddies. Uh -huh. 
And, and what you don't want, this is a PSA to any future opposing left fielders who might come, don't be a statue and don't just sit there and not turn and not respond to the kids that are hollering, you know, Coke or Pepsi or whatever they're yelling at you. They want to, they want to ask you questions, but the more you kind of lean in a little bit to it and get to know them, you know, you may find yourself out there getting a, a, a burger and a beer at a tailgate at another ECU game that you're not playing in because they're going to invite you. They want you to come back. They want you to be part of the community out there. So the players who realize that this is something special, one of my favorites was Anthony Cruz, who was the left fielder with Quinnipiac. And Quinnipiac had their only to this date postseason win in the jungle in 2019 in the first game of the regional and he just bonded with those left field fans. And, you know, when they lost in the regional and it was time for them to go, he was a senior and he said it was my last college baseball game. And um, it just the experience was priceless to have them call me over to the fence and give me this box of snacks and the card they'd signed for me. I mean, that's that's amazing stuff. And that I also love um, Chris Kaler, who pitched for George Washington last year. So he was an opposing pitcher. And then this year he's an East Carolina pitcher. So just to understand the difference, you know, he loved the experience as an, as an opposing pitcher, but for him to go, Hey, maybe I want to come play here after I was you know, yelled at, I want to be the one they're cheering for. So that was kind of a unique perspective. I thought. I mentioned that one of your previous books was about the legendary ECU baseball coach, Keith LeClaire. So obviously you had kind of a running start on your new book here because of your vast knowledge of ECU baseball. I wonder how you describe the impact, and you can revisit the Keith LeClaire story if you want. Coaching Third is the name of that book for those who haven't read it yet. Um, but also the, the role of Cliff Godwin in the rise of ECU baseball and maybe even the rise of this culture that you describe in your book. Because as you know, Bethany, and maybe some of our viewers and listeners do know, Cliff Godwin is A, a former ECU player, so it's running through his veins. But B, he's a guy that when those SEC and ACC programs have had coaching vacancies over the years, uh, they've been intrigued by what Cliff Godwin has built or continued to build uh, in Greenville as the head coach of the Pirates. Um, those guys are figureheads in one way, but they can also contribute to the culture that you're describing in your book. So how would you, how would you uh, describe how that story has unfolded? Well, Cliff Godwin played for Keith LeClaire. So, and Keith LeClaire was a coach who, who was, you know, brought ECU to great prominence nearly to the College of World Series um, in 19, 2001, sorry, remembering an old book. But um, he also got ALS and died of ALS when he was 40 in 2006. So obviously a very difficult story for the Pirate fans. And so that was... Um, something that I really wanted to tell. And for Cliff Godwin, he wears number 23, which was Keith's number, and is going to wear it until they go to Omaha to retire that number. So there's so much tradition. He's really tried to instill the same kind of work ethic, the same kind of expectation of winning um, that Keith instilled in, in he and his teammates. And some of those include Eric Backich, the head coach at Clemson, and his assistant coach, Nick Schnabel, who both played with Cliff under Keith, and there are many others. It's quite a coaching tree. Chad Tracy, who had a, a, a pretty amazing, you know, MLB career during his career, and they're all great friends still. So one of the things Cliff has said is, "I want to stay here." You know, my friends come back for games, but you know, if he's not on every short list for coaching vacancies, then those you know athletic directors aren't paying attention because he definitely knows how to win and to create a culture. So it, it's a definitely a straight line from Keith, although there were some great ECU baseball moments before Keith arrived in the late 90s. I focused in the book on everything in this century and talked to a lot of former players who were there for some of the big postseason moments, as well as a ton of off the field stories of the fans who were just so devoted to this team. If you are anywhere near Wilmington, North Carolina, and looking for a little live music, a cold beer, a tangy slushy, a fun crowd, or just a taste of the good life at the beach, Jimmy's Bar in Wrightsville Beach is the place for you. Located on North Lumina Avenue, just one block from the sand and waves of the Atlantic Ocean, Jimmy's features a full bar with nightly beer and drink specials, and it hosts musical performers almost every day of the year. One more fun fact, Jimmy's annual children's bike drive, which started in 2017, now distributes more than 1,000 bicycles and helmets per year to young people in the Wilmington area and beyond. Jimmy's Bar, 
your home away from home on Lumina Avenue in Wrightsville Beach. You mentioned that oh so close story from the Keith LeClaire chapter. Mm -hmm. I also know you were literally there in person for a more recent oh so close <laughs> pirate story as they try mm -hmm. to get to the College World Series. I think some fans are a little bit surprised to learn that the three schools in our state with by far the most appearances in the NCAA baseball championship, as they like to call it, th those three schools with 30 plus each are Carolina State and ECU. And, and they're really all neck and neck with each other. Mm -hmm. And as you know, it's come to the point where the ECU Pirates have more trips to the NCAA tournament without a trip to the College World Series. Do you believe that like one layer of this ECU fan base passion cake is related to the we've been knocking on the door and we're going to yell our heads off until we kick this door in? I think so. Although I can't imagine a world where the Pirates make it to Omaha and anything is diminished in terms of the fan attention. I think that's only going to ramp it up if such a thing is possible. But there is that sense. And, and there is that sense of, oh, you know, and every one of those near miss stories is in the book. And, you know, in one case, they were in at Texas Tech in 2016. And, you know, really just one hit up the middle that should have gone through the infield, not would have been it, but it was, it was fielded by the Red Raiders. And, and that was the end of that. And the one you mentioned was the Super Regional against the University of Texas in 2022. And I think I made a face when you mentioned it because every Pirate baseball fan just doesn't really want yeah. to talk about it and is convinced that they did something to cause um, the, the tide to turn in that game too that day because things were going very well until they weren't. But um, Texas was an amazing team, but it was a very rough weekend um, here at Clark O'Claire. So I think that, yeah, I think that there, it's a really unique situation to have come the close as many times as they have. And fans are very invested in that, but I don't think it would it would slow anything down if they make it. And I think there's a spirit now. When Keith LeClaire came in, he talked a lot about Omaha, and at that point, the players hadn't even thought that Omaha was something they could aspire to. But current players and players from a year or two ago will say, "No, you know, our, what we talk about now is is winning a national championship, not just making it." Um, so I think that that expectation, even though they haven't yet made it they'll tell you that making it is not enough. You could give a lot of shout outs as you actually do in the acknowledgements in your book, of course. Uh, but I wonder if you could describe who is Jared Plummer and why was he so important to you <laughs> making this ECU baseball book so great? Jared is just a relentlessly optimistic pirate fan who runs a Twitter account called Pack the Jungle a great account, you know, he videos, like there's a, a, a thing called the jungle jump, which is a little bit like the Lambo leap where players jump into the arms of the um, left field crowd after games. And he videos every one of those, he posts every one of those, any big moment, you know, that one of my favorite things is when he told his wife, he wanted to start a Twitter account and she said, it's gonna become an obsession and, you know, truer words were never spoken. But he is a great ambassador and he's created this account where anybody who would like to understand what it's all about, I think, can go there. Um, so for me, he's, he's just been indispensable along the research and writing process. Anytime I needed a phone number or a video or a photo, he could just pull it immediately. I don't know how he does that. But then the most um, pertinent point is that Jared, you know, after a big series win or a big postseason win or any kind of a huge game, he'll post on his account never take this for granted. And when I started deciding what kind of book this was going to be and that it was going to focus on the culture, I didn't think there was any phrase that better summed up what this program is all about and the appreciation that the people here in Greenville have for just getting to be part of things, um, even when it doesn't end the way we want it to end. So, so I asked him for permission to use his catchphrase as the book title and the rest, I hope, will be history. And that is the title, Never Take This For Granted, subtitle Around the Diamond with College Baseball's Most Devoted Fan Base. Again, the website where you can pre-order the book right now is ecubaseballbook.com. I remember you sharing a story about after your Keith LeClaire book where sometimes the person who read your book would encounter you in person and like literally ask you for permission, you know, are you a hugger or not, Bethany? Because mm -hmm. it just meant so much to them personally. It, it feels like there's another community aspect to this book. And I mentioned the almost 50 people I think that you interviewed. 
what, what were some of your favorite memories in collecting the stories that made this book become what it could be? Quite a few. I love the chance to go interview the children, um, some of whom are out in the jungle and, and those who are out there are going to recognize their, their names and their faces because they're always there. And, and just the parents that would invite me in to hear about their child's love, not just love for the team and the program, but in, in many cases, their connection to one player. That was just incredible to hear the way that players reached out and were so generous to these kids. I love those experiences. Another was about two and a half hours I spent with the aforementioned Jared Plummer and Brian Dilday, who Dilday is known as the loudest megaphone fan, the yell leader of left field. He's amazing. And he and his wife, Corinne, have some of the funniest stories about trying to take their megaphone and their cheers on the road to <laughs> um, environments and stadium staff that don't really understand them. But that's never stopped them once. And so I, I, that was just a, a thoroughly enjoyable evening and loved the chance to tell those stories. You mentioned the recruiting advantage, whether it's the jungle, uh, the focus on baseball in and around Greenville, North Carolina, where from the youth level and on up, it's, it's well known as a great baseball state. And you may even know this, but last year, our state had more teams in the NCAA baseball championship mm -hmm. with eight than even – more famous so-called baseball states like California or Texas mm -hmm. or Florida. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a local culture. It's also a statewide culture. And I, I just wonder, were, were there one or more ECU players who best put in perspective either why it helped them pick ECU or mm -hmm. why it enabled them to enjoy their time wearing that Pirates uniform? It's funny, the example that came to mind might not be what you think, but it was actually Ryder Giles who transferred out for his final year of eligibility to play at Kentucky. And I, I debated because it's tough when they, when you know, you talk about the transfer portal all the time, I know, and it's tough for Pirate fans when a player decides to do that. But in talking to him, he is just through and through a Pirate. And that decision to play his final year somewhere else was made with the blessing and the approval, really, of Cliff Godwin. But he told me just about the ability to bring some of that culture to Kentucky, who made the postseason last year for the first time in many years. And, you know, he Ryder was kind of the only one who knew what was going on <laughs> and what to expect. And now that he's graduated, you know, finished his, his baseball years at Kentucky, he's back in the area uh, coaching young players and is every bit a committed Pirate alum and fan. So I think that's kind of an interesting situation. Um, there are many others, you know, players who've come here from like Zach and Jake Agnos, brothers who Jake played here first and then Zach and the story of their connection with with Cliff Godwin. That's really a father figure kind of situation that's, you know, it's going to be lifelong. You just know it. And one of my favorite things was Zach Agnos saying, really, what I want to do is I want to come back and be the head coach of East Carolina. So he may be his father figure, but eventually he's gone in for his job. But, you know, he can think of nothing he'd rather aspire to. Um eventually when his minor league and he's having a pretty nice minor league career so far as a pitcher. Uh, but this is the place he'd like to land. So there's some amazing young men who, you know, just continue to come back and that super regional against Texas. Yeah. You know, I think there was just a whole section of former players who are ready. Yeah. You know, they're going to be there whenever it does happen. There will be dozens, if not hundreds of former players who are going to be ready to, to jump on board. I am a better person and a more effective business owner for having known and learned from Emily Parks over many years now. Emily's company, Organize for Success, helps multi-passionate business owners and executives bring harmony to all the layers of their lives, from work to side projects, from friends and family to hobbies, community, and beyond. With Emily's help, you too can make every minute matter. She helps you determine what earns your time and how to efficiently accomplish what matters. One of the many things I love about Emily is that she does not impose her will on her clients. She listens to them. That way she can better help them cultivate the lives they want to live. You can set up a complimentary call with Emily today by visiting OrganizeForSuccess.com. That's Organize, F-O-R, Success.com. I know this is not the focus of the book, but I wonder, given that you've had your eyes on Pirates baseball for decades at this point, with them ranked in the national top 10, what do you see from this year's group just in terms of its potential to be maybe that group that finally kicks down the College World Series door? 
I mean, if, if, if things are clicking on all cylinders, there's absolutely no reason this can't be the year. 2022 was almost the year and no one really expected it. Um, they were swept by Ryder in the opening series that year of the season. And but then had, went on a kind of a crazy winning streak at the end of the regular season and it just continued. But this team, you know, just the offensive firepower that you see, you know, players like Jacob Jenkins, Cowart, Carter Cunningham is just hitting amazing right now. Justin Wilcox and Riley Johnson was just the American Athletic Conference player of the week. And but then also the pitching. And so, you know, I mean, this is this is baseball 101. You have to have both. The depth in terms of bullpen strength, Wyatt lunsford Shankman has the best ERA in the yep. nation as of today, or I heard that today. And that's something you don't always have at the college level, particularly a, a, a smaller, it's not a smaller program, but you know what I mean, not, not a power five. And so it's been really amazing to see. And sometimes they'll be playing a team that doesn't have that bullpen depth and you kind of go, okay, this, they may, this other team, this opponent may stay close until the fifth inning but then the wheels are probably going to fall off and there's no sense with this program that that is going to happen. So, you know, very hopeful, very, very much think it's possible that, that they could, this could be the year, but you know, if I say that and it doesn't happen, then it's going to be my fault. So we're always very nervous <laughs> about that kind of thing. Well, we will not, we will not ask any questions that turn you into a jinx. Uh, but as we let you go, how about this? What else would you like people to know about the book? Again, the title, Never take this for granted around the diamond with college baseball's most devoted fan base. The author, Bethany Bradshaw, is joining us today on the David Glenn Show. What may be that we have not yet discussed would you like folks to know about this new book? Well, I think it's just a lot of fun. There's quite a bit of joy in this book. There's some really great little hidden gems of stories. Um, at maybe the most fun, this and Bones McKinney might be the top two in terms of fun I had writing. I will also let you know that I have some appearances this week here um, in and around Clark Clair Stadium. I have two book signings at local businesses in Greenville and three book signings at every one of the games against Wichita State. So anybody, I said the other day, if you just holler my name in Greenville this weekend, I'll probably hear you. And, <laughs> sign you book. Um, and so I'd love that. would love the chance to, to talk to fans and to, and to sign a book for you. Um, and if you pre-order by Thursday night at midnight, you'll be eligible to win quite a cool prize package with a signed Carter Cunningham jersey, a couple signed books, and a signed Parker Bird trading card. And Parker, we didn't mention Parker Bird, but most people probably know his story and it's in the book as well. And I believe he's also part of what's made this kind of a magical group and a magical season so far. And to be eligible for all that, you would visit ecubaseballbook.com? That's correct. And Excellent. pre-order by Thursday night at midnight. Excellent. The website again, ecubaseballbook.com. She also has her personal website, bethanybradshaw.com, that has a list of all of her uh, offerings as, mm -hmm. as an author over the years. She is a great friend of the David Glenn Show. Thank you for this first appearance on our new North Carolina Sports Network. It's great to see you, and congratulations on your latest book. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Love being here, and I hope to be back. Absolutely. Her name is Bethany Bradshaw. Again, one more time, ecubaseballbook.com. Thanks to all of you for joining us today on the North Carolina Sports Network.